<laughs> if hatred knocks at your door, greet it with a smile, but tell it it has come too late, for love is already having tea inside. He told me to go back to where I came from. Confused, I thought I've been out of my mama's view for exactly 18 years and two months. I don't know how I could possibly return, but if you have come up with a new mad scientific invention that can turn me into a chewed piece of clot and take me back deep to the miraculous tunnels I came from, I would love to see it. <laughs> he told me this is Canada. And people who look or dress like me should have no business here. He felt the need to remind me of the country I'm in, as if the white color on the flag represents the color of the skin of the people who should belong here. Or maybe, maybe he thought I was bad at geography and failed all my classes despite the humble 90% average. He's probably still getting over the fact that I speak fluent English. She looked at me in disgust with my choice of attire, asking me why I would ever choose to enslave myself by covering and building barriers when freedom is supposedly this country's main goal and desire. So this one, this one is to the men and women who find the need to rudely question my independence they made life choices. To the women on the bus who'd rather die than sit next to what the media calls a potential terrorist. This is for the kids at school whose visions have been tainted with ignorance by puppets who have more control over them than their parents. This is for those who are discriminated against and abused on a daily basis by people who claim to know their intentions and motives. And no, no, this is not another apology letter for crimes I have not committed. The world has simply looked past the me that is me and the universe within. So let me begin by saying peace be upon you all. Salamun alaikum. My name is Nassim Askari. My first name means breeze and my last name means warrior. It pains me to have to translate my Iranian Arabic name into an imperial colonial tongue for all of you to understand it before it loses its poetic merits and translation, translation, translation is so weak it can't even compare to its shadow. My name is in the poems of Hafiz, Sadi, Sohrab, and Rumi, and as exotic as my name in its history may be to some, the media and several governments have labeled people who look or dress like me as terrorists, so as a Muslim, Iranian, Canadian teenage girl, I have decided to unapologetically raise my voice and my pen, the most powerful weapons I own, and show the whole world otherwise. Yes, I'm that Muslim girl who's breaking stereotypes on a daily basis. I refuse to accept that we're all the same. I don't want to fit into your system of robots and puppets. And it pains me to even have to question and think about whether I'd ever want to give birth to an innocent child who has to carry all the evil this world has built up in its spine. Because what do I tell them? What do I tell them when they ask me why the media is selectively and systematically biased and the youth's role models continue to roll them and stone them and send them in the wrong one directions, but still I refuse to allow the demons to take over. So from an early age, I vow to teach my son that it's true that some men may be soldiers, but to remember that all women are warriors. Mm -hmm. I will teach my daughter to stand defiant, especially when the tides are stronger than ever, but I will let her know that even if she can't, it's okay because her survival in itself is an act of resilience and courage. I will teach them that words are more than just words. I want them to radiate warmth in this world that has turned so freezing cold, so I will tell them both that when hatred knocks at your door, whether it be disguised as a wolf, a man wearing shades of green, or a normal human being, greet hatred with a smile, but tell it it has come too late, for love is already having tea inside. If hatred knocks at your door, greet it with a smile, but look it dead in the eyes and tell it that it has come too late, because love, love is already having tea inside.